to talk about gravity. That that really awkward. If you ever like, I can never get a date. Well, guess what? Gravity attracted to you. Gravity. What do you mean? You never say nobody likes me. <laughs> gravity <laughs> does. And believe it or not, we're going to talk about today, and I've talked about this before. Technically, when you say nobody likes you, you're wrong because everyone's attracted to you <laughs> via gravity. <laughs> Don't you love science jokes, everybody? Oh, so funny. Yeah, it's funny. So, um, now this stuff is probably pretty important for something that's coming in the future. You probably are familiar of the egg drop project that's coming up. And that's kind of dealing with like free fall and gravity, right? Wait, are we uh, all freshmen, yes. Oh, yep. I'll introduce that the day before spring break. But, oh, oh, so, uh, okay. so we have time, extra time to work on it. You have nothing to do over spring break. Perfect. All right. So, just uh, just saying, this is more than just important for your test. It's also going to be important for you being able to do the egg drop project probably a little bit more effectively, and that's worth the test grade as well. So, so absolutely. It actually has saved some people from failing the class. Is it easy? No. Uh, very far when you talk about the properties of, of nature without hearing gravity being brought up somewhere along the line. It is such a fundamental property of all matter that we just kind of brush it off and go, yeah, we know what gravity is. We got that. We're good. But if all objects have a gravitational force, and each mass exerts a gravitational force on another mass, which is what we'll, we're going to see today with an equation. I hope you brought your calculators. Yep. Probably our most difficult equation today. That was not smart. Uh, yeah. uh, not at the moment. You can get one when we do a math problem. Okay. And so if all people that have a mass are attracted to all other people that have a mass via a gravitational force, why don't we all just start? The Earth's gravitational force pulls on us a lot more than I pull. I mean, I know that I'm pretty attractive, but you know, my attractive force, gravitational force, is not I saw you. Wow. It was like... What? <laughs> I was laughing. <laughs> yeah, he thought he was like... Um, so, our attraction to the Earth is so much stronger than our attraction for each other, okay, that, um, that we're not going to be pulled towards each other, not, not directly by gravity, but a result of gravity, because gravity pulls us down, and that creates what? I talked about it yesterday, I heard it. Friction, okay? We said gravity is a force that pulls us down, and we said friction increases when your force on it increases, correct? Okay, so we're fairly heavy individuals. Sorry, okay? And if we're being pulled downward, then that's gonna cause a significant amount of friction, okay? Well, the force of attraction between all of us individuals here is actually really small, and you'll see it, okay? Believe it or not, gravity as a force in general is actually a really tiny force, 
the only reason that, that we experience a lot of gravitational force is because it's dependent upon mass. And so since the Earth is so huge, that's why we can kind of see a somewhat of a, uh, of a big gravitational force. But our gravitational force is like nothing. And the regional line, we don't weigh much. And we'll see that as we progress. So, so great, we're attracted to each other, but we're not able to really start being drawn towards each other because of friction. Hopefully you're starting to see what some things gravity depends on are. Can you, can you come up with some really important variables that gravity probably significantly depends on? Anybody come up with one? Even? Yes, okay. I'll accept that. Mass is what I was thinking of. Okay. The mass of an object drastically affects how much gravitational force you have. There is a second one that is also very important. Maybe you, if you actually read this while you're writing, you maybe can come up with the second one. I want to call on you twice here. Somebody else answer. But no, I guess. What? What is a force? Well, no. Wow, okay. It, it changes gravitational force, but it's not. Got a second guess at it? What is it? It's distance. Okay? So the two factors that really affect gravity the most are how big the object is and how far an object is from another object. So the Earth, okay, it has a big mass and we're really close to it. That's why it pulls us pretty hard. But what about like the sun? The sun has a huge mass. Why are we not being ripped out of the earth and flown towards the sun? It's really far away. So you probably are going to start to see how for or how distance and mass are going to play a part in gravity. Now, I've already kind of talked about this, so let's progress. You guys got it? Yeah. Okay. Well, let me see. All right. I kind of already talked about this, but you want to get this in your notes. I want to get to the, the math. The math is going to be the more difficult part today, I feel like. Come up with our first law, our second law, and our third law. Also came up with uh, the equation for gravity. Which is a pretty smart dude. He deserves he deserves a lot of the accolades he gets. Now I'm going to show you the equation in a couple slides. I don't know if it's the next slide or not. But we just said that gravity was really based upon, and it says three variables, but two of the three are the same variable. Why do I say that? If you read while you're doing this, why do I say two of the three variables are the same variable? The variables. Okay, so you have two objects, so you have two masses. So I guess they're not exactly the same variable because they're masses of different objects, but they're they're still both going to be mass related. So here are the two things that we said are important when we talk about gravity. The mass and the distance between your masses. So yeah, right now Ethan and I have a really short distance between us 
but our mass is actually real, relatively small compared to Earth's mass and its gravity pulling down on us. Right? Questions so far? Is this new information? A little bit? Okay, what 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 is new? What is something you maybe didn't know? The what? Okay, the variables. I haven't even shown you the equation yet, but what else? What's something you didn't know before today so far? So you knew it all? That gravity is based on distance. Yeah, gravity is based on distance. Now if you think about it, it probably makes a little bit of sense, right? But up to this point maybe you didn't know that. There's your equation. That looks like a fun one, isn't it? This is by far our most challenging equation up to this point. And I'm going to actually write the equation with the big G on, on top because it kind of confuses people sometimes. I'll write it like this. On the next slide, I'll give you what big G is. It's a constant that Newton had to discover for us to be able to do this. It was quite a unique way how he discovered it, but we're, we're not at that point where we're ready to kind of talk about that. Um, I mean, they actually are done the exact same way. Like, this G would be multiplied. Anytime you multiply, it's on top. So that's why I put it on top. So it's usually best for you to use this equation because most of the time students get messed up when they see, well, what do I do with that G? Because you don't multiply it by the R, because if you did that, you're actually dividing. If that makes sense. So I probably put the G on top. Yeah, there isn't a multiplication symbol here, but you guys understand when you've got three variables next to each other the, that you multiply them, right? Okay. Now we got big M and little m. What's the difference? Now, do you think it really matters whether you put the, the big M first or the little m first? Do you think it matters? Because last time I checked, when you take three times two versus taking two times three, you still get the same number, right? Yeah. So really, just as long as you multiply your two masses together, that's all you really need to worry about. Okay? You got this? Ready to move on? I'll get to the math. No? Still writing? So this is your R. That's your distance between the objects. So like if I were trying to figure out the gravitational force between me and Carly, I'd have to measure the distance between us, and then I'd put that in as my R. Uh, no, let me see. Let us see which I want. What 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 of this I want you to put in? Yes. What ball is it? talks about the gravitational constant, big G.
That looks like a fun unit, doesn't it? Cheese units. A Newton times a meter. Ugh. Wow. A Newton times a meter square divided by a kilogram square. Actually, you could write that a little bit differently. You wrote it that way so that you can obviously see that the meters cancel and the kilograms cancel when you're doing this in your math problem. And I'll show you how this works when we do our math problem. Now, is that number a big number or a small number? It's what really small. And that's why it says here on this last bullet, the small size of G tells us that the force due to gravity is actually a really small force. For example, if I got like close to even here and I measured my distance to be small, okay, and I measured our masses and I plugged it in here, would taking our two masses and multiplying it by G give us a really big number? No, it would still be really small still. So that should show you that gravitational force really is small, and the only way to get a really large gravitational force is typically to have a really large mass. And that makes sense for the Earth, right? Yes? important variables, distance and mass. Here's what this equation tells us. It tells us that if you increase the mass, you're increasing your gravity. And if you decrease your distance, you increase your gravitational force. And the opposite is true as well. Small mass, large distance between, it was a small gravitational Tell them. five different times. Mari? Yes. Go ahead. Are directly is when one goes up, the other goes up, or if it goes down, the other goes down. Inversely means when one goes up, the other goes down, or another goes down, the other goes up. You say that a little louder so everybody could hear it, because they could use another or a fifth or sixth reminder of what this is. OK. So directly means both go up or both go down. Inversely means one go up, one go down, or the other way around. Okay. Inverse means opposite, direct means same. Go and write that in your notes if you don't know that. Inverse means opposite, direct means same.
Now, let me show you the mathematical relationship here. I'm hoping you can understand this, but if you don't, pay attention. If you divide by a really big number, is that going to give you a big number or a little number? Little number. If you divide by a really small number, will that give you a big number or a small number? Big number. You guys understand that? Like if I take one and divide by 500, is that going to give me a big number or a small number? Okay, but if I take one and I divide it by 0.000001, is that going to give me a big number or a small number? Big number. Okay? So what this is trying to show you is, is that it says the force of gravity is inversely proportional to the distance. So what that means is, inverse means opposite, correct? So if distance goes down, small number, force gets big. Or if distance goes up, big number, then force gets small. That's what invor inversely means. So how about mass? Mass is directly related. Let's do the opposite here. If this is a big number and you multiply by a big number, is your answer going to be a big number or a small number? Big number. Big number. If you take it, I switch this to small. What will your answer will probably likely be? Small number. A small number. Let me give you an example. I'm going to flip this. If I have 500 over 1, you get a relatively big number. Yeah. But if I have 0.00001 over 1, I'm going to get a small, small number. number. Okay, are you seeing the relationship here? When this goes up, this will go up because it is what? Directly related. Directly related. Or when this number goes down, this number is going to go yeah. down. Now I'm holding all the other variables constant so that you can see this. It's important to understand. So let's do a sample problem. Get your calculators out, everybody. Oh, why did I erase that? Oh. If you don't have your calculator, go get it. Yeah, I would write this down. This is going to be one of our more challenging math um, equations to use. So uh, let's let's make sure we focus here while we're doing this. Go ahead and write this math problem in, and then we'll we'll tackle it. got this written in that we can start breaking or peeling the layers of the onion back. Okay. When doing any math problem in physics, what did I say you should probably do first? Find the variables. variables. Okay. What is the best way to find the variables? The units. The units. Okay. Sometimes it'll just tell you. Guys, probably the very first thing you should do is read the question. Here's what I mean. I had a student, not in this class, I won't say the person's name, that hadn't done the assignment, and the student asked me for help, and I said, read the question. The student read the question, it's like, oh, I know what to do. Like, sometimes I wonder if you even read it. 
just like, oh, this is going to be really hard, so I'm just going to give up. But that's a bad life skill. Not even just school related. We're talking life. Work's hard today. I just give up. My marriage is hard today. I'm just going to divorce. My kids are driving me nuts today. Not a good life skill, is it? Let's do this. Find the force of gravity. That, if you read that, it tells you what you're finding. What are you finding? Force. Force. Between two, okay, so I have two here, so. Now, do I, do you really have to worry about big M and little m? Okay, I know these are the same masses, but it doesn't matter what you put in for either M. It doesn't mathematically matter. But I am gonna write this out. Now, if it didn't tell you these were the masses, how would you know it was a mass? Kilograms. Okay? Whose centers are five meters apart. Now, there's a variety of ways for you to figure out this last variable. Doesn't two masses pretty much give away which equation you're going to use? Yeah. Well, we know we're solving for this. We've been given this. We know this is a constant. So what is my last variable then? Now, use some critical thinking too. You don't always just have to look at the unit. However, meters is probably going to tell you a distance, which is R in this case. And then somebody tell me what G is. Big G, the G I just gave you. 6.67 10 to the negative 11. I think they added a Newton times a meter squared divided by a kilogram squared, correct? We actually have it already solved for us. Thankfully, they didn't make a solve for R squared or for R or for M or any of that stuff, but they could. Now that we have the variables, replace them with the numbers. it into your calculator. Here's, here's what, what you have to do when you're plugging this into your calculator. Everyone stop for a second so I can explain this. Most of the time students at your level struggle with how to plug things that are in scientific notation into their calculators. Okay? You must put parentheses around it. You cannot just say this times this times this. If you do that, you're actually going to say the exponent is times 5,000 and 5,000 again. Okay? So you absolutely must put parentheses around your scientific notation guide. In fact, just do it like that. Start with your parentheses, this number. Now remember, do you guys remember how to do the exponents? Yeah. Okay. Carrot stick, negative 11, not subtract 11. There's an actual negative number on your calculator. Okay? Parenthesis, parenthesis, 5,000, parenthesis, parenthesis, 5,000, parenthesis. Now, what I would do is I would solve that. I mean, you could do it all at once. This is just the unit, guys. Uh, great question. I, I see students sometimes, they see that the M is squared, and so they square this. Uh-uh, that's just the unit. Only squared if the equation tells you to square it. Does that make sense? 
Like if the unit has it squared, that's just the unit. Don't worry about that. Don't square anything based on the unit. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Good. So plug this in your calculator. Let's see if we can get the right answer. So we don't have to manipulate any, any of the variables or move anything around. I better do it so I have an answer. Anybody with specific questions, probably calculator-based calculator would be most of them at this point, but... Anybody got an answer? Yes. What do you think the unit on that is? And let me show you how this works. Did everybody get 0. 0.000067? Or your calculator might say 6.67 times 10 to the negative fifth? What'd you get? What did I say? She just rounded the 6 to 7. So that's the right answer. Yeah, so they got that. They, but you round it on here. You round it that second six to a seven, which is not wrong. Oh, of course. I mean, it's the same answer, just round it. Okay. Yeah, well, so it should be, I think, what is it? Four zeros? Four zeros. So it's six, six, seven. But what you just did is rounded this up to a seven, which is fine. Not a big deal. Hey, did anybody not get this number? I have to figure out the calculator, what's going on with the calculator, just so that we know that we are doing this correctly. I can't I see the rest of it. Oh, yep. Yeah. Only did one five thousand. Okay, anybody else not get this? I have to know. Okay. I, I got it? Sure? Okay, I have to see what, what you're putting in so I can explain. Okay, you, that's the top part. You still have to divide by 5 squared. So that's the same number, just a non giving notation. Okay, oh, all right, stop, stop. Okay, now, well, I want to show you the units. Now normally I said if you have your units in what they usually are, your answer will be in what it usually is. Well, let me show you how the units work out. If I take this and square it, won't I have a meter squared? Yeah. That should cancel out with that meter squared. Okay? This is divided by a kilogram squared. Won't they cancel out with two multiplying kilograms? Yeah. Leaving you with a newton which is what you should expect to get, okay? And we only have like one minute, so that's probably all we're gonna to get to today. However, is it possible you could solve for like a mass and have to manipulate it a little bit? That's certainly possible, okay? No. Well, no, I go on the bus. Yeah. Honestly, that's a good way to check. Before I get an eye. That everything matches up, because if your units don't match up, there's no way you're getting the right answer. But that's kind of our next level. She's not short. But she's right here. That's why I say students that are the most successful in my type of classes are the ones that understand how to use all right. Have a great weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Off uh, campus lunch. Off 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 campus lunch.